never thought I'd see you. Said you can't be found. This is cool, though. This is it. We're in London, babe. Do you ever think you'd be in London? Driving around in a cab, just like tripping. Roll that joint. Please don't forget what I said. He has this certain iconic status amongst the surf community for just being a free surfer and kind of just doing his own thing. Your love, my love, our love, yeah. I always thought he had such a good voice. Maybe no, he didn't. So... Help but stare, stare now. As far as I could see, there was a star. Have you ever made love on a double-decker bus? <laughs> spend much time in the city. It's a lot of fun to take the day off and just walk around and see what's happening. But sing a song as if they're singing to me. That's when I know you're around. I said that's when I know you're around. I'm dreaming if you will. You want to make a wish, Mommy? Please. Make a wish. Make, make, make a wish for Santa Claus. Ah! <laughs> Good wishes. Good wishes. Here, jump down, Papa. You know, you put out a record, and like, I didn't know what was going to happen. I'd maybe just play some local gigs around town, or you just don't know if people are going to accept the music at any other parts of the world besides where you live. And to be able to come to Europe and tour is like sort of a, a dream for a band from America. I mean, some of our favorite bands and musicians have come from London, and just to be walking around the streets here. Look at that beach right there, honey. Right under the festival pier. So you didn't think there was a beach in London, and there is, see? It's gonna feel so good. My whole surfing thing started when I was 10 years old. I got my first surfboard. And then six years later, Billabong signed me to surf form. When I was 16, I turned professional. And my career as, uh, as being a professional surfer, I think it's really created the person and the man and the musician that I am today, for sure, just by traveling so much and living in different countries and being a part of different cultures and stuff. Over the last 18 years, I've been exposed to so many great things in the world that it's wonderful. You know, I owe so much to surfing. When I put the record out, the first people to ever show interest or ever embrace the record or the music at all was the surfing community. And I think without them, for me, um, I wouldn't be here today, you know? Like, it, it would have been a really rough, long, hard, completely different road that I traveled down than the one that I did. You know, you go in the water and it's sort of like a cleansing. You can, like, sort of wash away all the bad things that might have been clinging on all week. And um, it just feels, like, so pure and so nice to ride waves and surf. And that's what it felt for me to pick up the guitar. I was 16 years old and I went to hang out at a friend's house and there was a guitar leaning up against the couch. It was really great for me because right after I picked it up, I asked my buddy at the time, I said, how do you, how do you play it and hold it? And he, I think he taught me like a, a G chord and a C chord and I think a D chord and that was it. He's like, that's all you need to know for a while. Just learn those chords. You know, I had a group of friends in high school. It was great. We all fell in love with music and we thought the coolest thing to do would be to start a band. All the times I was playing with that band from high school, there was two other singers, and they were singing, they were writing the lyrics, they were writing most of the songs. I mean, musically, I wrote a couple songs musically, but um, 
I never really concentrated on the lyrics much because I wasn't singing, and there was like two other singers in the band, and they they wanted to sing what they wrote, you know, and um, and there wasn't like we had a whole bunch of like original stuff. We'd be playing like three hours a night, so we'd do like our 15 songs, and we'd end up doing like 20 other you know covers. So, it got to be a point there where I thought, you know, if I want to play music, I might as well try to play my own stuff. Um, but I didn't know if I could. I don't know if I was able to or anything. I started writing a lot once, you know, I met my wife. It was at my house, and he was super embarrassed, so he made me lay down on my stomach, and he sat on my arse. You can he say. He sat it. on my butt because he didn't want to look at me because he was so embarrassed. I didn't want you to look at me. And it was um, the song that he proposed to me, too. What? Wasn't it? Did I sing you that song? Yeah, on my mind. Oh, baby. How cute. That's really romantic. <laughs> oh, baby, let's get down tonight. Every time we do, just it feels so right. Let's go. And we've been married, what, four years? Five years. years. We've been together five years. Yeah, it's been five years, huh? Yeah. You know, Hendrix is three. I just got inspired at that time. We got married and then we had a little boy, the birth of our, of our son. Um, a lot of things happened in my life, like big transition. Um, and so it kind of like opened up a lot of areas of like, uh, I don't know, sort of things to write about. It was really great. A lot of things were going on in my life. And after a while I wrote enough songs, got enough songs together to actually put a record together. And that's kind of how that whole thing kind of began. Every day people like you and me just want to live naturally time taught you and you told me nothing gonna get us down can't you see i said if it don't matter to you it don't matter to me no 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 if it don't matter to you it don't matter to me and then Jack Johnson signing me to his label and helping me on my first record. I knew of the Johnsons before I went to Hawaii that first time, and they live right in front of Pipeline, which is like the most amazing surf spot ever. And his brothers are actually phenomenal surfers, and his dad, and the history that the Johnsons have in surfing is like legendary. And when he started playing the acoustic, I started playing the acoustic, and we started teaching each other songs. It was just really a great time, and it was a time that um, I'll never forget, because nothing else mattered to us but like surfing, eating, and playing music. Like there was nothing else in our world that mattered. It was one of those things that was really great. You know, we've had a friendship for the last 17 years, but when I first met him, it was funny because we never, you know, nobody had aspirations to like, I want to be a singer or a musician, or we were just so stoked on surfing and, and, and learning how to play the guitar. And it was really weird. Like he started, um, he started his own like kind of solo project and started singing songs and he got a record deal. And what was amazing, he became such a big star and he started his own record label. and. And that was really what was the start for me, I think. Um, him starting his own label, I sent him all this music, and he said, you know, let's put out a record on Brushfire. And I thought, this is going to be this, such an amazing opportunity. So we went over to the North Shore of Hawaii at his house and recorded the record at the Mango Tree. And Mario C. came in and produced it with Jack. And, I mean, working with both those guys in the studio was, like, just incredible. I mean, uh, Jack was just so beautiful. He just, he produced it, but he was there. And every song, every time we tried to work something out, he always had something in his hands. It was either a guitar, ukulele, an acoustic, an electric. He was on the drums, the bass, piano, whatever. He was always playing with me, so I never felt like it was just me, and then they would say, you know, okay, do it again. It was like they were really hands-on. Mario was great with so many ideas. For me, I just had some songs on the acoustic guitar and not really necessarily a direction to go, and Mario and Jack really 
kind of put that together in the studio for me, which was great. What you know about love You said our love would be You said you were my girlfriend Some girl you turned out to be I guess you know about leaving Loving and leaving me Sometimes you write songs and they just float around forever and they could be in a pad of paper or in your brain and I think if you don't record them and like put them down then they kind of just exist and they're not like ever finalized so it was really neat to have Jack and Mario help me create that record and finalize that stuff. But you can't drown in your sorrow Cause you might be found, might be found tomorrow What you know about living you know, there is sort of like a little a, a little thing going, like, and I don't know, some people, like, I'll do interviews and they'll describe it like it's, uh, like, the new kind of surf music, but I don't think of it as, like, surf music. You know, they always ask, are you, do you guys think that what you and Jack and G-Love and Xavier Rudd, John Butler and Ben Harbour, are this, like, the new Beach Boys sound? And it's not at all, but it's, um, it's one of those things, like, when I grew up, um, like, surfers and surf movies, like, the soundtrack to surf movies are just as important as the surfing that's going on in them because there's not a lot of acting. It's just people riding waves and and you got to put music to that footage. So when I was growing up, I would listen to like uh, Blink 182 and Pennywise and um, you know bands like that were like sort of the soundtrack of our lives because they were all they were in all the surf movies. And then that music would be in our head when we're out surfing. And I think that people that are making surf movies nowadays, they're creating the soundtrack themselves or having a lot of friends come in and create a soundtrack that's a little more laid back you know they're really trying to capture a vibe for the images that they're capturing so I think nowadays kids and people that are watching these movies are now driving down to the beach listening to sort of those kind of soundtracks and um, I think that's kind of what's happening you know it's uh, it all just a big cycle you know I think in a couple of years it'll be Pennywise again <laughs> Look right there, that's where Jimi Hendrix lived. Hey, look at this plaque. Look, look who used to live here. See that up there? It says Jimi Hendrix. Guitarist and songwriter lived here. This house? Yeah, this house right here. Look, he lived in there in the windows. Are you yeah. in a band? Yeah. Oh, no, come on. What band? It's uh, Donovan, Frankenrider. <laughs> we're going to play at I Abbey Road on him. Friday. I went to his concert. What do you do? You play the band? Frank play a little music, yeah. I went to his concert in San Francisco. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Wow. And where is he playing here? Well, it's me, but we're, we played Shut on... Shut up, uh, you yeah. don't have been <laughs> Listen to this. A couple of times of a night, when we've like been cashing up and stuff like that, yeah. literally about three times, I said to a girl, can you hear something? The music's on. We heard like... Ding, 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 and literally, I was like this. He used to live down in the flat downstairs, like where our... Sort of where our cashing up room is, yeah. and that's what we can always hear at night time. We was like, <gasps> I've heard it three times. So that's where he lived down there. Yeah, he lived down in the basement downstairs. Wow. Is that what his name is, Hendrix? Yeah. Yeah. That's no. our son's name. Yeah. My little boy, he really likes hanging out with the band. So loud. That's a big stick. That's a big stick. Don't break it. Never I think about what I lost I changed my mind instead to what I still got Cause I got you I said I got you You can call me Papa And I'll call you baby Don't forget your mama's mind I don't know if he's going to be a drummer or guitar, bass. It'll be interesting to see what he does, but, uh, you know, he's going to be, he'll definitely be, uh, you know, introduced to every instrument, and uh, I'm going to introduce him. You know, I've already been serving with him, so he, he'll be submerged, I think, in, in everything, and he'll probably come out to be a, um, a computer wizard. <laughs> he'll probably want nothing to do with music or surfing, because the family I grew up in, like, nobody in my family 
ever played music and nobody ever surfed. So they look at me sort of like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> we'll see what Hendrix, what he, what he turns out to be, but I just, whatever he wants to do, it'll be beautiful. I just want him to be happy. Right there, Hendrix, see that clock over there? You know what that's called? What? Big Ben. Can you say that? You guys, it's gonna be the most beautiful. Look at the sun coming behind that like five million year old castle. This is incredible. Get your camera out immediately. Sometimes people always say to me like, you know, all, all the times you go out and you surf and you play music, I mean, you must be living a dream. Like what an unbelievable life. But it is, and one side of it's really great, but there's also a lot of sacrifices that you have to make when you do these sort of things like, I'm always away from the house, like always away from home. And so like three weeks, I'll be gone and then my family will come out for two weeks and then I'll go away again for three weeks and they'll come home, you know, like, it's just, I'll, I'll never be away from them longer than three weeks, but my son's gonna be three in December and I don't know, my wife, it's really hard, you know, being away from her, it's, and I think in any relationship, it's, it's really a tough thing. I think everybody deals with that when they start doing a lot of traveling. I think in two days time, we're gonna do this thing we're gonna play a whole set and record it live at Abbey Road Studio, which is um, gonna be, it's gonna be such an honor to be in that studio. I think it's gonna be sort of surreal. And these guys I'm with, the band I'm with, is uh, we've been out for the last year and a half playing these songs and just having such a great time on the road. And I think it's kind of a good way to end sort of this run we have with this first record, because after we do the Abbey Road thing, then we're gonna go into the studio and record our new album. It's gonna, you know, be the one that, uh, sort of the first one I've done with these guys, and it's kind of really neat to be able to, I don't know if there's any way to put closure to being out on the road and in support of an album, like, we, you know, we had our first record come out, and this is kind of like the, cl the closure to that. Wouldn't want to lie to you, I'm a little nervous. I think if somebody was in this position, they didn't say they were nervous, they'd be lying. <laughs> but nervous is a good thing. This is one of the only things I ever do that I get butterflies in my stomach. This and when you're sitting on the beach and the waves are really big, that's what it feels like. You should have asked for the chicken again. <laughs> it's, <a wheel. laughs> it's all have a lot of fun. Yeah, of course. Make sure whatever you do, let's just play really tight but keep it loose. <laughs> She told us the story about how she met you and was like, I love talking to Frank and Ryder. And then you're like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> she works at Jimi Hendrix's house. <laughs> he lived there for a year. She sells $100 candles. <laughs> In Donovan's presence, will you marry me? Yes.
thank you guys so much for a beautiful night, man. Thank you. We'll see you again soon, all right? Thank you again so much, everybody.